This has been an issue that's been out of the media recently, but it's really important. Um, when I don't have my rack hat on, I work, um, I work as an academic and I look at sexual violence and violence against women um, and teach a bit of criminology and sociology in these areas um, at Western Sydney University. And so, yeah, just, just a bit of background. So it's still going on. So it's a, there's a few different estimates because nobody really knows exactly what the, what the prevalence is of sexual violence on Nauru, but we've got um, Jenna Price, academic and journalist, saying there's recently 19 reports in 18 months. And those, those are only official reports. So um, official reports are kind of the tip of the iceberg um, because a lot of people don't want to report because sexual violence is such a taboo around sexual violence and they don't want to be stigmatised. So there's going to be a lot, a lot more happening. We've also got paediatricians like Dr. Hasanthi uh, Gunasakera who said there's one port report of assault of every 13 days, um, assault of children. So it's pretty prevalent issue. Um, even the government's own MOST review has found that um, the allegations of sexual assault on Nauru, they found it entirely credible. So even such a sceptical body such as this has still found, yes, this is a problem. Um, and also many of the allegations of sexual assault and harassment are of detention centre staff against detainees. So um, it's a pretty horrible environment and um, the speakers today will be able to fill out more details of exactly what's going on. I'm just giving a brief overview. Um, a bit of the context about women who are, seek, um, who are seeking asylum. So one of the differences for women who are seeking asylum is that sexual violence really unfortunately structures a lot of their experience. Um, that's sort of the, the main difference between women and men's experiences. Men also experience sexual violence, but not at well as refugees, but not at the same rates as um, women do. So, for example, Women for Refugee Women UK, in their 2014 study, found that 72% of the women, the asylum seeker women they talked to, had experienced sexual assault. Um, Refugee Council UK's Vulnerable Women Project found 76% of women had experienced sexual assault and 50% were persecuted due to being women. Um, so violence figures a lot prominently in women asylum seekers' stories. 32% um, were raped by agents of the state, so poli police, prison guards, uh, the army, things like that. That's a, that's a really common story. 10% um, were forced marriages and 6% were forced into sex work. So that's the context. And women asylum seekers, they experience sexual violence as a form of persecution that they're seeking to flee. Um, so many women on Nauru will have fled for exactly that reason and be subject to more sexual violence when they get to Nauru. In the journey, when women are undertaking the journey of asylum, they're also vulnerable. That's another condition under which sexual assault occurs. And unfortunately, when they get to their destination countries, they're still not safe from sexual assault taking place. Um, there are some conditions that create a likelihood of sexual assault. So if you look at some of the UN reports about refugee camps, um, there are things that they say that refugee camps need to do to keep women a bit safer. So geographical location, so women aren't in really isolated places. They, they are in Nauru, the women are in isolated places. The design and structure of the camps, I'm sure that Pamela and Thea will go into a bit more detail about the way the camps are designed and structured, but they're not designed and structured in a way that keeps women and children and people who are vulnerable to sexual assault safe. Um, not enough security presence was another thing the UN identified, although as you'll probably see that some of the problem is to do with um, is to do with the, the police and the guards being sex, sexually harassing women. So that's another issue. Um, absence of independent NGO presence in camps and resource competition. So if there's a local population and they perceive that the refugee community is getting uh, more benefits or unfair benefits and there's resentment there, which is also happening on Nauru. So as you can see, almost all those things, conditions that the UN identified are taking place in Nauru and as a, a very rich country, as one of the countries with the high, one of the highest living standards in the world, um, 
we have this responsibility to protect these women and children who've most likely already experienced sexual assault, um, who are very vulnerable, and um, we need to bring them to Australia for more medical support, for counselling, for a chance for healing and safety from the traumas that they've already experienced. Um, yeah, thank you.